Uh, hey guys, this is Atul from Team Kiran Academy and in this uh, video or lab we are going to look at how to install a, a Docker on an Ubuntu machine of a type Linux and then for, for the time being I'm just started or I'll configure a, a Docker and then start a um, small container for that. The guide is huge but I'm going to do till here I think uh, working with containers and then we'll stop it and the next part we'll have remaining parts on this so there'll be multiple parts or in this uh, docker lab so i'll quickly first explain you what we do um, as per the, our standard all the documents uh, so as i said this is um, going to be first uh, part we'll cover introduction and i would highly recommend you to go and thoroughly in introduction in the theory part we're going to go deeper but this is a uh, doc or this is the architecture of docker architecture look like so this is where we have a docker host and this is what i'm going to install i already have an ubuntu machine and i'm going to show you how to create a ubuntu machine um, you can do it on any cloud you can have on premise as long as you have i think for docker we need one vcpu but for later we are going to do kubernetes in that it expects some at least two vcpus so we'll have docker host that docker host itself uh, you can have an external client in this lab uh, in this uh, uh, lab i'm going to show you the client which is also running the same host as well and then we'll pull some images from the docker hub we'll see that later now in order to prepare this document or this video we've used these documents maybe if you want to go deeper you can read on these also we are going to do install this docker on linux machine so you should have some very basic linux familiarity so you should have come uh, access or familiarity with linux commands like vi which is an editor lscp basic commands and if you don't have those we have a free course available inside the program uh, on linux for beginners so you should have inside uh, the program itself if you can't find it just let my team know in through the support channel or you can ask in whatsapp group also before this there should be a guide on how to create a free account on either on aws or azure uh, pick that and then make sure you create a Ubuntu machine and you should be able to access that Ubuntu machine. I'll still create it on uh, AWS here, but I'm assuming you already have familiarity with that. If not, before this module, there should be another module or a video which talks, or maybe in the, within the same video, uh, module, you should be able to see this a video about creating an Ubuntu machine and connecting to this Ubuntu. Uh, we are going to use Ubuntu, and I think we are going to use a specific version of Ubuntu, which is 20.04. Once we do the Ubuntu, there are some specific commands. I'll explain you as we go these commands. But the common mistake I see is people, uh, they copy directly onto the Windows document. They had some junk characters. And then when they run it on Ubuntu, they might hit problems. So that's why we put it, I've copied it in Notepad. Make sure you download the Notepad will also be in the same place where you're watching this video. Just below that, this video, you will have the Word document. And below that, there'll be not uh, this Notepad as well. So maybe copy paste that or you create your own notepad, copy paste this command from into this document like this. Now, as we go, I'll explain these. Um, so we're installing Docker and then um, ideally it should be in a separate command. I'm going to just run it one Docker container. I'll show you how that container look like. So for that, I've already logged in to a uh, AWS console. I'm in a North Virginia region. I'll simply create a very quickly uh, machine. So I'll create a launch instance this you should have already done but it's it's a quick recap so we'll tell you how to do that as well so just click on launch instance uh, here okay so let me move uh, this myself okay so let me move this uh, myself here and we'll create a machine called ubuntu you can name it anything of your choice and then from here, we are going to use, scroll down uh, once again, Ubuntu. And here in the images here, we're going to pick this Ubuntu machine. Make sure you select Ubuntu here, type image. And then below that, we're going to select here Ubuntu 20.0. So yeah, from this drop down instead of 22.0, 22.04, we're going to select here 20.0. I think the machine is a little bit slow. I've noticed when I do this with recording. Yeah. So this is Ubuntu server uh, 20.04. You select that. Now we are going to use free tier, which is uh, for 
for Docker, Fruity is okay, but for later with Kubernetes, it might need to be slightly bigger. So we'll select a different machine. Key pair, I've already, you can create a new key pair. I've already done that key pair, so I'm not going to select that. Again, I've covered this. I've already created a key pair, which was Ubuntu earlier, so I can reuse that um, key pair. Um, we are creating a security group, which is nothing but a firewall, and allowing SSH port, which is port number 22, to connect to this machine, and rest all is fine. We are saying launch instance. And that will start the instance. Just give it two minutes. In the meantime, let me go and explain you the commands. So first thing we are doing is we are, if you already have a machine in which you already have some Docker or some software that you've already installed but some failed, this is how you can uninstall them. So we are saying sudo, we are run the, sudo means a root user. And I'm saying apt-get is for, uh, for package manager on Ubuntu. And I'm saying remove Docker. It's totally optional. Um, because I've not done anything, this is a fresh install. I'm going to start from here. I'm here in this game, sudo apt-get update, which means I'm updating any packages on this machine here. So this is the machine that has been created. Uh, let me connect on this machine. And in the meantime, this is the command I've copied here, sudo apt-get update. This is the command we need to be running uh, here. Now once machine comes, next once it's done, I'm saying install the packages to uh, to use repository over HTTP. So HTTPS, sorry. So we're going to use uh, all the connections, all those things we are going to do over HTTPS. For that, it will need some self-signed certificates. And we are installing my CA certificate, which means Certifying Authority Certificate, Curl, few other things we are installing for that. So this is my Ubuntu machine. I just click on this and then connect. So click on connect here. And then saying connect using EC2 SSH, click on connect. So I don't need any putty, I just inst uh, connect on the on the browser itself on AWS Cloud. And I'll, I'll be on this console here. Now, so for that console, first command I need to run this, which is my updating the packages. So just right click and paste here, copy and paste, hit enter. And it will install or download all the updates uh, which are available. Since I installed, there might be some, uh, it's a packet, uh, the image, or the VM was created using a standard image. Since then, when image was created, since then there's a new pack updates, those updates are being updated here. So once uh, this uh, package are updated here, the next command I'm doing is I'm installing the packages to allow H uh, repository over HTTPS. So there is a, I need some S uh, SSL or TLS package, which will be used for signing certificate, CA certificates. This is a curl, GNU, PG, and LSB release. These are some of the additional packages I did install, so which I'm going to select here, and then copy these here, and then just go and paste here. There's these ones here. Hit enter. So it's going to install and type Y for installing, and it'll install all these packages here. Once this is done, next is, um, I'm creating a directory and giving that permission 755 and in that I'm creating a folder etc apt keyrings. This is where I'm creating the file, one of the files. So just copy paste it here and then on paste here. Hit enter. Next is, and this is key. This is where guys, a lot of guys make mistake. So what I'm doing is I'm saying um, curl getting this GPG and putting them inside this file, which is at etc apt keyring docker .gp, docker jpg. And this is a one single line, so be careful. It should be all in one single line. And make sure you use notepad, otherwise you might do some mistakes. Hit enter here. And if no, like if it comes to next without any errors, that means successful. Now, this is very, very um, important. This is where a lot of guys make mistakes, so be careful on this one. So this first is a command prompt. So I'm not using this dollar here, but this dollar is important. I'm using as it is. So just copy it as it is here, put it in notepad, which I've already done this. And here I'll just copy paste as it is from here and then select and come here and paste it here. This is very important. If you don't see anything here, that means successful. Otherwise you'll see some errors. Let me explain you what we are doing here. So we are basically echoing output. Uh, we are saying what is my architecture of my come uh, on this Ubuntu machine uh, that docker.gpg, I'm, I'm copying it and then I'm updating this file at cd apt source list.d 
and then docker dot list here now once this is done i'm probably need to update my packages up again because i've got some additional packages here by running or it will download additional packages if if identified based on the command which i've given earlier so i'm updating again and it is fetch some data so basically it's saying pack package list done which is fine next is i'm going to install docker engine this is where i'm installing saying sudo which means root user apt get install packages docker ce uh, docker ce cli command line container d docker build plugin and docker compose plugin we'll be using some of these later compose in subsequent modules and subsequent yeah so i just copy paste again hit enter here paste and now it's saying do you want to install some packages say yes why and hit enter again and it is downloading now all the packages of like um, container d uh, docker cli docker ce and so on while it's doing this let's move on to the next one and this is where i'm saying is installing um, i've already done the docker install let me see yeah next is i'm saying that start the docker and enable the docker enable the docker is next time that basically as an executable so next time i restart the machine uh, it should all be uh, up and running without me I have to manually start these com docker commands or docker engine so i'm saying first start the docker and then enable the docker as well we'll be enabling that for automatically so the, uh, the docker should be up and running now and i'm now enabling which means on next reach start of this pc or this Ubuntu machine that should automatically be started uh, in. So I've added into some services. Next is I'm checking the status of the Docker um, so, uh, on this. So status sudo sysctl status Docker. Hit enter here. And if you see now active, which means it's running, Docker is up and running. And I'm on this page. How do you come out of this? You just type Q on the Q, and then you come will come out of this. That means my active uh, my container process or Docker process is running, and the process ID is 8876. It's using 35 MB memory for now, right now here. And then I'm identifying the user ID used because later what I want is that even without sudo user. Um, or without going to the root user, I should be able to access within the Docker command itself should have, sorry, Ubuntu user, this user which I'm using Ubuntu should have access to the, all the, uh, the Docker executables directly. I don't have to go to through root user. So I've identified the ID, my ID, user ID is Ubuntu. And later I'm saying sudo user mod, I'm modifying the user's permissions and saying that Docker executable should also have uh, Ubuntu user, this is my user which I've identified earlier. So make sure if your user is different, replace this Ubuntu with whatever user you get here. So this user should also have permissions on Docker to access Docker directly. And this is what I'm, I'm doing here. So select here and then paste, hit enter. Now for me, in order to change uh, this, uh, this command to take into effect, I have to log out and log back in. So that's where I say exit from here, maybe close this browser, so that means disconnected, and then connect again on this uh, Ubuntu machine. Once this is done, then I'm good. Docker should already be installed now. All I'm ready is now check the Docker version. So if I go and final is Docker version. If it's all successful, I should be able to able to install or access this now. So give it a few minutes. It's I'm making connections. And if I right click on here and paste, which I'm in Ubuntu user, this time I'm not using sudo or anything like that. Now I'm saying Docker version, it's built 24.04. So it, might, it means installed. If you need any help um, or if you need any commands, always use docker dash help and it will tell me all the commands. So basically these are options and saying I can use these common commands, run, execute, ps, which is process, build, etc. And then I have a Docker I'm going to use container here today. We are managing containers, but later I'm going to use Docker Compose. We are going to use a lot of other things as well, Docker volume, etc. later. But for now, I'm just going to manage the container. So I'll run this command containers. So we've successfully installed. I just want to show you it, it will go to come in the next lab, but I'll show you how to quickly start a container. So this is how you start your first container, um, which is 
there are two ways or the old way and new way so you can directly run docker run or you can do docker container run um, this is just an old and new method so i'm going to pick this one itself here so i'll explain you what we are doing in this command uh, here so this is optional 14th and it's saying what it's saying is i'm saying to launch a new docker i'm saying docker run or container run one the same thing i'm saying run a container dt means a detached mode um, it will detach uh, and then i'm saying type create ubuntu type um, so i'm installing a another within this ubuntu vm i'm st starting a container which base version of that container is a base image is ubuntu itself and then um, i want to start a bond shell on this so let me copy and this is how you can run uh, on this here and type oh, before that yeah maybe we'll say uh, docker i think container ls which means any docker right now if you see there's no container running right now here it's blank and i now run and say ubuntu it's so basically what's doing it's fetching something called as image we'll talk about that image a little bit later there's a, in subsequent lessons there's an image how do you create how do you download over the different layers we'll cover all of them so pull the latest image like ubuntu type uh, and then stored locally this image now and if i now do a docker container ls i have this docker container running now of type ubuntu image again and it started 17 six ago uh, 17 seconds ago uh, update was okay it was started 19 seconds ago and so on later we're going to do, do some more advanced things but i just want to show you quickly install as well or you can do docker ps hey i have these are the these are old method and new method of commanding so there are multiple ways to achieve the same thing uh, ps docker processes this this is same thing and the way which i did earlier docker container ls same thing these are same commands basically old and new method of commands that's pretty much on this particular lab uh, one more thing before you take the screenshot of this and make sure you put it into our whatsapp group and that way i know that uh, you have worked this lab and i know you also um, yeah it will tell me that you are performing these labs in our whatsapp group it will inspire others as well to do this lab also make sure you post in a linkedin um, because that will build your social social profile tag it on academy so you can circulate with others that way uh, employers will start knowing that hey you've done these labs um also um maybe other recruiters when they see they start seeing you as an authority or, or not authority but at least that yes you know you're familiar with these and they will have more trust with you with that go and perform this lab and i'll see you in another lab uh, this is atul from team k academy thanks for watching and I'll, let's I'll move on download this and perform and let me know in the group Take care and bye for now.